some of my old colleagues really, really need to hear this. Today I'm going to share the unspoken rules of engineering that no one tells you but that are going to have a huge impact on how successful you can be as an engineer. I got inspired to make this video when I stumbled upon this super old article from 1944 called The Unwritten Laws of Engineering by W.J. King. And while reading through it I thought, wow, how can this be so old but still so relevant? And I think every engineering graduate should know these things, which is why I decided to pick my five favorites of these rules and update them a little bit and share some stories of people who have not followed these rules and what that led to. Let's get into it. Rule number one, get things done. You don't want to be known as someone who comes up with super ambitious ideas and agrees to take on all of these projects and is super enthusiastic when it comes to starting new things, but then never actually gets any of it done. Never finishes a project and just keeps jumping to the next shiny new thing. And oh man, I have encountered people like that. <laughs> They're really fun to brainstorm with up to the point where you decide who does what and they either find a way to get you to do all of it or they take on a bunch of tasks but then whenever you follow up they always say that they had so much to do that they didn't get it done. But then they still keep taking on new things. Don't do that. <laughs> Agree to a realistic number of projects and tasks. Really think about if you have time to take on something new or if your existing projects would suffer from it and then just get the work done. This is how you get trusted with bigger and bigger projects because if you're nailing the smaller projects then this gives others confidence that you're ready for the next step. But if you can't even handle the small projects who's gonna trust you to succeed at anything bigger? Rule number two, have a let's go see attitude. Rather than speculating and theorizing how something is, just go and see it. I experienced a strong case of over-theorizing when I was working with a layout engineer who was planning the layout of a new factory. And he was trying to reduce the footprint of the building, so trying to make it smaller. And he was trying to fit my equipment into an area that was completely unrealistically small. <laughs> and he asked me to cut a lot of things that were essential, like access path to the equipment which are really necessary to be able to maintain this equipment. And I asked him, have you ever seen this equipment in person? Because we actually have the same kind of equipment already here in the factory and I can just show you and then you'll understand why your suggestions are not realistic and we can have a more productive discussion. And he was like, no, I've never seen it, but I also don't know if I have time to do that. Definitely not in the next few weeks. Don't be like that guy. Be eager to go and see and encourage others to do the same. And if you're asked to plan or design or improve something that you've never actually seen in person, ask if there's a way that you can see it because it will improve the quality of your work exponentially. Rule number three, communicate clearly and concisely. This goes both for verbal and written communication. When you're asked your opinion on something or you take the floor in meetings, don't ramble on forever until you've finally found your point. Think about what you want to say, structure it in your head and then say it that way. And when you're writing an email or a Teams message, again, think about what you want to say, structure it and then write it that way. In other words, make it easy for other people to understand you and get the information they need. Because otherwise people might just stop asking you for information and that's very bad. To underline this point, let's keep this one clear and concise. Enough said. <laughs> Rule number four. You're expected to do exactly Exactly what your manager tells you to do. And I don't mean this in a super hierarchical way where your manager gives you commands and you execute them. I mean that you're a part of your manager's team and in a well-working relationship between your manager and you, you're always transparent with how busy you are and the progress you're making or where you're stuck and you agree together with your manager what you're going to be working on next. And if any reason comes up for you to change what you're working on that would keep you from sticking to the plan you agreed on with your manager, then you inform them and discuss with them if that's okay. Now obviously if someone asks you a small quick favor or if you have an idea how to proactively improve something that will just take you one or two hours, then that's not what I'm referring to. But if someone asks you to take on a new assignment, you need to tell them, I need to check this with my manager first, let me get back to you. And if you uncover a gap, so something that no one seems to be working on, but someone should be working on, then again, you don't just dive in, you talk to your manager and see if that's something that you or someone else should be 
taking on. That's also a great way to keep you from overcommitting yourself because you have a barrier between the ask and the reply, which is your manager. And to give you an extreme example of where this went wrong. So I had this project planning equipment for a new factory building. I had been working on this project for about two to three months and everything was going well. I was moving it along and then suddenly I got a meeting invite forwarded by a colleague who had scheduled a meeting with the design manager of that building to start planning for this equipment and then a bit later he decided to forward this meeting to me and said something like i feel like it's time to start working on this equipment and i thought you might want to be involved let's discuss next steps and i thought what this is my project i've been working on it for months why would you schedule a meeting for it especially clearly without talking to our manager who would have known that i'm already working on it and so i told the design manager to decline this meeting since i'm already covering this i informed our manager about this and i told the person that i'm assigned to this project and to leave me to it and believe me when i say that our manager was furious because this person had <laughs> their own projects to take care of and was just jumping into new projects that weren't even their own without checking with the manager first and in the process also making me super angry because someone had just tried to steal my project so yeah don't try to steal other people's projects or start random projects without checking with your manager first rule number five ask for other people's input and value their opinions especially when you're a fresh engineer but also later it's important to realize that you don't know it all and that other people have a lot of value to provide as well especially your more experienced colleagues this is possibly due to the dunning-kruger effect but a lot of fresh engineers tend to think that they're very smart and that they can do it all by themselves you should know that this is definitely not true and really pisses other people off and if you make mistakes people are going to be a lot less forgiving if you didn't ask them for help even though you were clearly out of your depth and especially if they offered their help and you didn't accept it. I'm not saying that you don't have any value to provide yourself, you definitely do and you might even have a rookie advantage over your more experienced colleagues in some way when it comes to out-of-the-box thinking since you bring a fresh perspective and you're not biased from other projects but you also obviously have a lot to learn from your experienced colleagues and just try to make use of that and get excited when they want to teach you something or help you out so that they want to do even more of that in the future and help you grow as an engineer now i only touched on five of the 12 rules mentioned in this article so let me know if you want to see a part two because i definitely have a lot more things to talk about <laughs> And if you want to be even more prepared for working as an engineer, you can check out this video right here on five things I wish I knew before becoming a mechanical engineer.